Welcome back to this channel. In this video, we still discuss the reaction kinetic, which is the third video. And we're also still in the 8.1 reaction rate. Don't forget that we still have 8.2 and also 8.3. In the first video, we already discussed about learning objective A, B, and C. And then in the second video, we learn about learning objective of D and E. So, in this video, we are going to focus on objective F. In this slide, we are going to discuss how the order of reaction affect the rate of reaction. So, take the example. If the order of reaction is 0, so means that the power of x equal to 0. No matter what is the concentration of the reactant, because of power to the zero, it will always equal to one. So one multiply with the k, so the rate will always equal to k. Next, if the order of reaction is first order, so means that x equal to one. So the rate law will become rate equal to k multiply with the concentration a. So if the concentration a is one molar, so the rate of reaction in term of k is k. If the concentration of A is double to 2m, 2 more per liter, so 2 times k, the rate of reaction is equal to 2k. Now, let's proceed to second order. So based on the general rate law again, the x will replace with the number of 2 because it is second order. So if concentration of A is 1 molar, 1 multiply with uh, 1 to the power of 2 is 1, 1 times K is K. So but if the concentration of A is double to 2 molar, so this one will become 2. 2 to the power of 2 will equal to 4, so we'll be in 4K. So with uh, this very simple calculation, we can have a conclusion that the rate of reaction is independent on the concentration A if it is zero order. I repeat again, if the order of reaction is zero order, the rate of reaction is independent on the concentration. However, for the first order, we can see that the rate of reaction is double if the concentration A is double. So this is the first order. While for the second order reaction, we will notice that the rate of reaction will increase by factor 4 if we doubling the concentration A. If you still remember, in the previous video, we have discussed about the graph about the rate of reaction to the concentration. So, in this video, we discuss by substituting the value. In previous video, we only discussed based on the formula. So we bring the conclusion from the both uh, video that we already discussed. So we can prove that for the zero order, the rate is independent on the concentration. So that's why here you will get a constant line. Well, for the first order, when the rate is double, if the concentration is doubling, so we will have a linear line. For the second order reaction, if we look at the graph here, it will increase exponentially. So because of when the concentration of reactant is doubling, they will increase with the factors exponentially. Now let's proceed to the tutorial question number four. You are given the chemical equation and also a red law. So based on this red law, we know the order of reaction to S2 is first order, while the order of reaction to C2 is second order. So overall order of reaction is third order. 
Okay, this is what we understand previously. Yeah? Okay, so now let's look at the question. At the temperature T, the rate of reaction is R. How does the reaction rate change if? So it means that now the rate of reaction is R. So what will happen if only the partial pressure of X2 is double? So for this question, at first we can do assume. Okay, concentration X2 always equal to concentration C2 and always is one molar. Okay, but because of this question is partial pressure, actually the context is still the same. We can say that partial pressure X2 equal to partial pressure C2 and that is always equal to 1 atm. If the concentration is given, so we use in terms of the concentration. If it's the pressure, then we use pressure. Okay, so in this case, because it's pressure, so we can ignore this one. So, and then the rate of reaction is equal to R. So now, we know that the partial pressure of the X2 is double. So that means partial pressure X2 now is equal to 2. While partial pressure C2 still equal to 1. So red will equal to K. Concentration X2, uh, sorry, partial pressure X2 remain, uh, sorry, is double, so it's 2. While for the C2 is remain, is 1 to the power of 2. So when we press the calculator, it will be equal to 1 to the power of 1 is 2. Uh, sorry, 1 to the power of 2 is 1. And then 2 to the power of 1 is 2. So 1 times 2 is 2k. So it means that compared previously, it is in terms of R. So now basically is equal to 2R. So we can say that the rate of reaction is double. So now, we go to another part B. The partial pressure for the X2 is half and C2 is double. So rate equal to K. Partial pressure of X2 now is become half, which is 0 0.5 to the power of 1. And then C is double, means 2 to the power of 2. So 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 4 times 0 0.5 is 2, so it's equal to 2K, which we will say that it is equal to 2R. So the rate of reaction also double. Let's continue. Write the red law for this equation. If concentration A is double, rate of reaction also double but doubling the concentration B has no effect so this question basically is the other way of the previous question previous question give us the red law and then we need to determine what is the changes of the rate of reaction but in this slide we are given the changes of the rate of reaction and then we need to determine the order of reaction and then we can write out the red law. So when concentration A is double, rate of reaction also double. This is referred to first order. Doubling B has no effect so this is the zero order. So then you can write down red equal to K concentration A because of to the power of one. So if you didn't write down the one is okay. Concentration B because it's to the power of 0. So any concentration to the power of 0 always equal to 1. So if you don't want to write like this, also no problem. This one is accepted. Next, proceed question B. If concentration A increased 3 times, the rate of reaction also 3 times. So this is the first order reaction. An increasing of B three times will cause the rate increase nine times. So that means they are increased in the power of two. So that's why we know this is the second order. So NR, we will write out the red law is equal to rate equal to 
K concentration A rise to the cons multiply with the concentration B to the power of 2. Last question, which is the C. Reducing concentration A by half, no effect. So once it is no effect, we know that it is zero order. But reducing the B half will cause the rate of reaction also reduce half. So this is first order. So now in this one, we can show that the rate law is rate equal to K multiplied with the concentration of B. In the previous video, you are given three formula for the half-life for different order, which is zero order, first order and second order reaction. In this video, you have to remember another three formula, which is called integrated red law. Similar with half life equation, each order going to have a different integrated red law. For the zero order, the integrated red law is concentration A equal to concent initial concentration. The not here bring the meaning of initial minus kt. So the red constant here is referred to the gradient. So this is the y and then this is negative k is the gradient. t will be the x axis and initial concentration is the c. So for the first order, the integrated red law is ln concentration A equal to ln concentration, initial concentration A minus kt. So we can see the difference between the formula 0 and first order is first order is with the term of ln. Second order, the integrated red law is 1 over concentration A equal to 1 over initial concentration A plus kt. So the difference here is negative k minus kt become plus kt and then this time also 1 over. Okay. So when we have this two, uh, integrated red law, basically this integrated red law, they are in form of the linear line, which here is represent y, and then the k is represent the m, the t is represent the x, and this one is represent the c. So y equal to ms plus c. Please remember these three formula. So that in next video, we can apply the formula and the knowledge in second video and third video to do the calculation. Before we end this video, let's have a very quick summary. We have zero order. So in second video, we already learned about how to write the red law for zero order. And we also learned how to write the half-life, the formula of half-life for zero order. Okay, this is what we learned to the integrated red equation. So red equal to k is red law for zero order. Integrated red equation or integrated red law for zero order is concentration A equal to initial concentration A minus kt. Half-life for the zero order is initial concentration A over 2k. Well, for the first order, the red law is red equal to k multiplied with concentration A. Integrated red law is ln A equal to ln concentration A minus kt. And the formula for the half line is ln 2 over k. Or you can also remember as 0.693 over k. Well, for the second order, the red law is red equal to k multiplied with concentration A to the power of 2. And then in the integrated red law is 1 over concentration A equal to 1 over initial concentration A plus kt. And the half line also in terms of 1 over k initial concentration A. Thank you for staying with me until here. So do remember this uh, slide. And then I will see you again in the next video and we will more focus on calculation questions.